Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds, and today I'm going to show you how to build a super simple cedar planter. So I built a couple planter boxes in the past and you guys seem to be really liking them and spring is just around the corner, which means it's planter box season once again. I'm building another one using inexpensive cedar fencing and pressure treated cedar tone two by sixes. Now, let's get started. I'm starting off with cutting up the cedar fencing to make the sides of my box. All right, so I got all the sides cut out, ready for assembly. Now, in my past planter box videos, I've seen comments from you guys that say you build my planter boxes and sell them, which is great. I love that. That's exactly why I do these videos. So I want to show you a way where you can make these even faster. So I built this jig. Now let me show you how it works. For this jig, I'm using my 90 degree positioning clamps to hold the two pieces in a perfect 90 degree corner while I glue and brad nail them. If you don't have a T-Track tabletop like this, you can just as easily screw them directly into your table. I use these positioning clamps in nearly every project I build. I can't recommend them enough, and if you're interested, I'll have them linked down below in the description. I'm using Tight Bond 2 wood glue and one and a quarter inch 18 gauge brad nails. With the sides of the box assembled, I'm moving on to cutting out the bottom pieces using more cedar fencing. I'm intentionally leaving a quarter inch gap between the two pieces to allow for drainage. Again, I'm using the 18 gauge inch and a quarter brad nails. Personally, I don't like seeing brad nail holes, so here's a simple trick to make them disappear. Use a toothpick and dab a bit of glue into the hole, then take some sawdust from cutting the cedar before and push it in to fill the hole. All right, we got the box done. It's looking super good and completely nail hole free. So now we're moving on to the structure and what we're gonna do is cut up our two by six. Let's keep going. For this build, I don't need this entire board, so I'm intentionally cutting around the knot holes to leave me with a very clean board. I'm starting off with scoring off the side to have very crisp edges on the frame pieces, then stripping it down to inch and a half width. As usual, I have plans for this entire build linked down below in the description. If you use them, I just ask that you please subscribe. With the pieces cut out, I'm marking the height, then gluing and brad nailing the cross piece to the legs.
Since these cross pieces are holding up the box, I'm using a longer 18 gauge, one and three quarter inch brad nail. All right, planter box people, I got the legs all put together and they are rock solid. And I went ahead and cut out my bottom shelf supports, but I want these to be black. So I'm gonna take them over to my spray tent, get them all painted black. And while those dry, I'm gonna work on my cedar cross pieces. Let's keep going. But first, I did a quick sanding at 120 grit and broke all the edges. For these pieces, I'm doing two coats of Rust-Oleum matte black spray paint. I want the lower shelf to be the same color and finish as the box, so I'm cutting up more cedar fencing to stack and laminate together. Since cedar fencing has a rough surface, when you're laminating pieces together, you want to make sure that you have really good glue coverage. Once the glue is dried, I brought it over to the table saw, squared off an edge, and then stripped it down to inch and a half width. As you can see, cedar fencing is not super consistent when it comes to thickness, so I ended up with some sections that were taller than others. So I ran it through the table saw one more time to bring everything to the same height. Much better. After cutting the pieces to length, I sandwiched six together to prep for cutting the notches. Now normally I'd cut out these notches using a router table and a three quarter inch straight bit, but I want to keep this build really simple, so we're just going to stick with the table saw. I have the saw set to cut 3 quarter inches deep. As you can see, after each pass, I'm moving the rip fence over one blade width until I hit my mark. After a bit of cleanup, the supports drop right in. All right, we got all our pieces cut out and our paint is dry, so it's time for final assembly. Let's keep going. I clamped a block to the table to give me a surface to push against. Spacers make assembly fast and consistent. I made some spacers to keep the cross pieces equally distant apart, then glued and braddailed the supports in place. I'm using 18 gauge, inch and a quarter brad nails. Again, I made some more spacers to set the height for the lower shelf. I'm gluing and brad nailing these cross pieces in using 18 gauge inch and three quarters brad nails. 
A quick tip for cleaning up glue squeezing corners, try using a damp paper towel and a tongue depressor. All right, so when you're mounting this lower shelf, you're gonna run out of hands really quickly, but what I lack in appendages, I make up for in ingenuity. So I've taken a piece of quarter inch plywood and a clamp to make little shelves for my piece to just set down on so I can put my glue on, lay it down on here, push them together, Brad nail them in. Super easy. Now, let's keep going. I'm back to using 18 gauge, inch and a quarter brad nails. I made one final spacer to center the box on the stand, and then I mounted it in place using inch and a quarter brad nails. And with that, this planner is done. All right, the cedar planter box is done. It looks really good and I am super pleased with how it turned out. This is a really simple and inexpensive build and you can do it two ways where you fill this entire thing with dirt and put plants in here or you can take a planter tray like this and it fits right in on the top of the box and you fill it with seedlings or whatever you want. Now, as usual, I have plans for this down below in the description and if you wanna keep up to date with my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video at all, hit the like button for me. It helps me out a ton and I really appreciate it. And leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. I read all your guys' comments. They are great. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.